Hello and welcome to Nug and Simic Review DC Comics The New 52 where every week Nug and I review every single one of the new DC titles. I'm Andrew Simic. And I'm Nug and this week we begin the reviewing of the number three comics. Now if I know anything from wrestling that means we're done this week. Well we're not done. We're not? No. Because three means it's over. Yeah we still have a little bit to go. Oh so it's like King Kong Bundy asking for the five count. <laughs> It'll just keep going. Oh boy. Let's get things started off with OMAC, uh, one of our favorites. Our sleeper hit. Our sleeper hit. We love OMAC. Uh, it's fun. Uh, every issue, uh, the title of every story is an acronym of OMAC, and I, it's a riot. What I love about OMAC is that um, even though all the stories link together, they also feel like episode of the week or yeah. episode of the month. It really is. It's a, Each issue is an episode of the OMAC show, and yeah. uh, you learn a little more about OMAC, and there's a story contained, That's and, right. uh, you know, this particular one is uh, pretty great. There's a lot of smashing. Yeah. I, I just can't get over how, how much fun it seems like the writer and the artist is having on this comic. I mean, it's a, we said it before that it's a, it's a throwback to oh. older comics, to Jack Kirby's work. Um, it's great. It feels like a you know the old uh, Hulk television show. <laughs> it does. I know it, it actually it, does feel like know, the old Hulk TV show. Like he wanders around from adventure to adventure and shows up. Can't remember <laughs> what he's doing. But what I really love is rather than having uh, Banner be on the road, this guy Kevin Cho is uh, he's just trying to check in. <laughs> I just want to go home. I don't want to be this thing. Yeah. I got to call my girlfriend. Somehow I've been arrested. Like it's it's really funny. Yeah. It's a fun. Funny, fast comic with a lot of fighting, and uh, that's a lot of F-words. <laughs> I mean, if you liked uh, OMAC 1 and 2, this is more of the same. Um, if you haven't picked up OMAC 1 and give 2... Give it a shot! Give it a shot. It's a different kind of storytelling. It's not all dark and brooding like all the Bat books and, and now all the Superman books. There's a lot um, of, like I gotta say, he's in all primary colors, blue and yellow and red. So these villains are all pink, and you know, like there's like crazy colors and lots of lasers. and Yeah, it's a great throwback book. It's Absolutely. It's big, it's colorful, you won't regret picking up OMAC. Not at all. Up next, Static Shock from our teen section of comics. Yeah. Static Shock. Uh, admittedly, the first two issues weren't uh, my thing. I mean, it's a good it's good storytelling, it's a good character. I just kind of want more out of Static. They introduced hardware in that first issue, and then we've never seen them since. Right. Which is kind of upsetting, because I really dig hardware. You know, the thing with Static Shock is, I was telling you after I read it, I was like, well... It's getting better. Yeah, this was the best issue of the three. Yeah, but it still doesn't make me care about the character. No, it doesn't. I think he, I think the um, the writer is struggling with finding uh, Static's voice. Like I a think, true voice for the character. I think he's struggling with what we're supposed to pay attention to because there is the whole Power Rangers gang of colors and then there's like their big virus-based baddie. Yeah. And, but then there's also like... Yeah. The piranha guy and the guy who looks like the Joker who are doing some sort of deal and that's sort of connected to it. And then there's Static's home life where he's got a sister who's been cloned and no one can remember or no one knows who's the clone there's and who's the real one. There's a lot going on. But it's just static. like, what of that am I supposed to care about? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the problem with it is that there's a lot going on, nothing's sticking yet. Although, you bring up the viral yes. the uh, character. I did like that. Um, when he, spoilers, when he and Static kind of get together, he replicates. Yeah. And he's like, I must replicate. Well, I, he's, a, he's based on a virus. He's and based that's on a virus. What a virus so, needs to do. Static Shock number three actually made me smile and be like, oh, that's interesting. I actually liked that part. Well, of the and character. then huge spoilers, you know, you know, Static's a kid. He doesn't pay attention to anything anybody says. Rotten kids. And he blasts viral with as much as he can. Of as course, that's exactly can. what viral needed to do. But that's of course... Right. He doesn't know that he's created a bigger monster. So Static Shock number three is moving in the right direction. Yes. I don't know if it's moving fast enough for us, like in terms, not the pacing, just in terms of what are we supposed to yeah. care about. I want to I want to care about these people that I'm reading about, and I care more about OMAC than I do about Static, and I don't sure. know yeah. if I should. Up next, uh, set your uh, filters for boobies. It's Red Lanterns. Uh, look at this cover. I love it. I think uh, if you like I blood. think that hey, if I was a rage-filled monster and I had to pick uh, a singular person to be my partner, I'd pick the the hot one, the hot one with the with the bone wings. Yes, well, uh, it's you know I haven't really been on board with Red Lanterns, but 
this seems to be the end of the story, like the end of the first arc. And one of the reasons why, with especially with Red Lanterns, when we were starting, like, oh, okay, well, maybe it's too early to tell until yes. the full arc was, um, you know, complete. And uh, these three issues, it does tie it in nicely. And you know what? I like it. I liked all, now that now that I've read all three and I see the story, like the first one left me going, ah, there's something missing, and the second one was getting better, but there was still a little something missing. This ties it all in. This is a nice three issue package, and I'm not nice, making a package yeah. joke. I'm not making a nice <laughs> package joke. Uh, it's a nice, neat little package, and it does everything it needs to do to set up to make me want to read issue four. Which and is, beyond. Which is what a great comic does. Which is what all these comics should be shooting towards. So, I mean, would you say after reading the full arc now that number one is a better book as well? Yeah, yeah, because I can go back and check it out and go, oh, yeah, I understand everything that this guy was going for, what the characters are going through. It just seemed like Atrocitus was like, oh, I really kind of miss being ragey. Yeah. And now he's like, he realized what he needed to do. He needed to bring a lieutenant I lo- in. I love the fact that... Almost immediately, there's a little bit of regret, regret which is awesome. <laughs> in the decision, yeah, which is real great to uh, to give uh, a certain intelligence to um, a rage filled monster. But here's the thing: like every one of these lanterns yeah. has like a second in command, right? Right. So, but there's four of them for Green Lantern. Sinestro has Arkillo, and I'm not just naming the guys that are in New Guardians. Yeah. Uh, Sinestro has Arkillo. The Star Sapphires, I guess, has Fatality because she's in New Guardians. Kind of like a but, default. Yeah, but then the Blue Lanterns. St. Walker shows up in the New Guardians, and I really wanted to see the elephant guy, Worth. It would have been fun, different. But now, does this mean, now that Bleez is... Maybe it's because we're not going to be seeing St. Walker, though, maybe. in any books, and they want to keep him in the spotlight. But does this mean now that Bleez is of intelligence and the lieutenant, that she's gone to New Guardians, and now we're back to square one with Red Lanterns with nobody there? <laughs> I, You know what, I'm not sure. But, going back to your comment... Um, the three issues of Red Lanterns, you know, they're great, and they want me to pick up number four, which I think is a success for the story. I think so, too. I think you've uh, suckered me in. I say that with love. Up next, Green Arrow. Uh, again, another book that seems to wrap it up. Yep. As far as this story goes with uh, the the internet villains, Rush, and all these guys that are trying to beat up Green Arrow. But for me, what I really enjoyed about Green Arrow was uh, they're setting him up like there's been the, all the mentions of the Q-pad, yeah. and it's like the apple of uh, of the DC Universe. But what they really did here was, after the fight, they really set up Oliver as the Steve Jobs yeah. of the DC Universe. It's not enough to have the gadgets, and, and it is almost like him talking about Green Arrow as well. It's not enough to have the gadgets, we have to do more. Yeah. What I always liked about Green Arrow, and I had mentioned this in last month's review of Green Arrow number two, was that it always seemed to be um, have a social commentary on what's going on. And it seemed to be lacking in the first two issues, but I think this was his discovery of I, it's time to do I, this. Yeah, and I think it's a great... He really hits home a good balance of that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of um, spoilers, what this issue is um, dealing with is the fact that all the people who log on to the internet to um, watch uh, a death happening... And there's in this book, there's about three million are all as guilty as the person committing it. Three million watching. Yes, it's, it's not three million deaths. Yeah, three million watching. <laughs> um, they're all as responsible as the perpetrator of the crime, and by supporting it with views, you're basically saying that it's okay to do this. So now let me put this out there to all of you, and feel free to comment on the video. But to you, because you're here, in that respect, which what he's saying, if you you're part of the problem. If there's something negative on the internet, and you comment on that thing and give it attention, are you part of that problem? It's it's a dilemma with our society, and and uh, later on, a Green Arrow is saying a speech where we have to be more than the technology that's around us. Yeah. And I think that what he's trying to say is, just because we have this technology and the ability to connect through technology and watch things we wouldn't normally be able to watch and be connected it doesn't sever the moral or personal connection between it. I know so many people online 
that comment and flame people and take people down in a real negative way because you're very safe on your side of the screen. Right. But you would never do that in person. You would never, ever do that in person. So that personal connection is severed when you do that kind of thing and you think you're safe. In person, it's a different story. And I think we all need to take responsibility for what we do or say, not just online, but in our right. real lives. And going The more you know. <laughs> and going back to Green Arrow... I thought the first two issues left me cold, although I did like the wrap-up. Yes. Um, so, I mean, again, it didn't shy away from the social commentary that Green Arrow has always, in its history, um, never shied away from. Um, I don't know if it's enough to pick up the series, but I am looking forward to where it's yeah, now going. Yeah, I want to see where it, it goes continues. next, for sure. Up next, Hawk and Dove. <laughs> okay. So I am going to talk a little bit about Hawk and Duff because it is the best of the three issues so far. You got to agree with me on that. You're not going to give me that? I can't. Okay. I thought the art was horrendous. Okay, and here's the thing with the art because you had mentioned that to me um, before. I almost have to blame, like the inker has to share some of the blame. Absolutely. Um, and I believe that in th this book... Yeah, the art was... It looked unfinished. Now It looked barely started. <laughs> now, with a writer-artist like Frank Miller, who, when he did The Dark Knight, he had Claus Jansen inking for him. Okay. And a lot of it looked much better. And now, if you look at Frank Miller's work, when he doesn't have uh, Claus Jansen on, it looks unfinished. I am just wondering if they need to put a better inker on the art here to that would be maybe uh, flush it out a little bit. Okay, okay. Um, again, uh, we're just, for let's say we're going at this square one. We're brand square new one. readers. Yeah. We're just getting to know Hawk and Dove. We don't really know anything about them. Still no. We're introduced to Condor and Swan, right. who this whole battle, this whole fight they have with them, the whole book, keeps saying, you guys don't even know what you can do. And as a reader, I want to go, yeah, yeah, no kidding. We still don't know what they can do. You should tell us. You should let us know instead of teasing us. And that's, that can't be the whole series. I, and don't mistake my words. It is not a good book. Mm -hmm. But of a bunch of bad books from Hawk and Dove, at least number three there's a moment, spoilers, where Boston Brand, that's funny, not Hawk and Dove. No, but the best thing of the, the book was when, about the Dead book is when showed up. Dead Man actually jumps into not Hawk. Um, Condor. Condor. See, I'm already getting mixed up but with look, all the Dead different Dead Man jumps into Condor avatars. and gets to see what is in there, which looks like the avatar of whatever is Condor. Right. So it's scary. I mean, I kind of like that. I mean, I liked something like about what's this in there. book. Yeah, I know. I just I'm, don't want to be, But let's know, Let's say something positive. Let's though. say something positive about it. Uh, it's stapled very well. Uh, the pages are very glossy. Uh, very <laughs> shiny. Um... It had uh, 22 of them, I want to say. <laughs> uh, overall, it is a functional comic book. So that's a positive. Up next, uh, Stormwatch. Uh, I make no bones about this being one of my favorite books of the entire 52. Yeah. And this week, I had to stop reading it because I looked at you and said, my mind just got blown. And I like that. It blew, This blew my mind in a... Invisible's Doom Patrol way, and I say that on purpose, because there are some characters in this who maybe you don't know, but now you get to see what they do, and it's awesome. Even Martian Manhunter gets a mind-blowing moment, and it's it, like everybody functions on this team in such a fun way, and the best is where they... Can we swear on this? I just was naturally going to yeah. say, the best is when they shit on the Justice League. Yeah. When they're like, let's just make sure these knobs don't go in there and screw everything up before we can stop this. Which is so great. This was an awesome comic. Yeah, I mean, if you have watched our previous uh, review shows with Stormwatch, the one um, underlying thing is that the characters in Stormwatch, their powers are unconventional. Uh, characters talk to cities. Uh, char you know, they, they, they're, There's one great moment where... Uh, a character is talking to Metropolis, Paris, and, and Gotham. Gotham City, and he, you kind of see the avatars of what uh, you avatars know, are big this year. Very big. We find them in Swamp Thing, Animal Man, Hawk and Dove, and now Stormwatch. <coughs> um, there's this character in the book 
that her power is to control the media, and she can actually rewrite the internet. She can talk to it. She can talk to it. She can rewrite Projectionist. Blogs. So, yeah, I mean, you're seeing all these different powers work together as a team, and it feels like, uh, you know, I want to say bigger than the Justice League. Like, it's oh, almost like... Way bigger. The the powers are all conceptually... They're, they're bigger than... I can run fast. Right. They're bigger than that. Yeah. And... They're so much bigger than that, and that's not, you know, saying the Justice League's small potatoes, but that power is bigger than being able to run fast. The power that the, the projectionist can feel the media wanting to report this, yeah. like the, the idea that she has a connection with the media as, a, as an entity... Yeah. is really cool. The fact that Jack can talk to cities. Right. The fact that that guy is the best liar. Yeah. Like, all of these... It's hard to quantify their oh. powers. It's like, it's not like where Superman, he's like, I'm super strong, and you can argue over the, on the internet about, well, can you move a planet? Like, there's all, <laughs> there's these limits to this power. Well, how fast can the Flash go? Can, can the King of Liars or the Prince of Liars move a planet? No, but he'll convince you that he can, and you'll believe him. All right, up next, Batwing. Uh, a bat title... Uh, that I'm not into, but I do have to say, again, remember when we were talking about Hawk and Dove and how it was great when Dead Man showed up? In this one, they finally involve the old African team, The Kingdom, and it gets interesting for me. Yeah. I'm, I, I enjoyed it. I agree that Batwing is moving in the right direction. I don't know yet if there's enough for me of The Kingdom. Um... I want more. I want but more. I want of that. more. I, I mean, maybe if they had started with that earlier, uh, instead of just a fight scene. I mean, last time we left Batwing, he had a machete through his chest. Then he got better, and he's still suffering from that machete uh, while trying to help this other person. <laughs> um, so, long story short, Batwing is getting. Um, it's getting better. Getting better. The oh, art. Oh, the, the character is also healing, so he's getting better. <laughs> he's as getting well. better. Um, the art is still suspect for me. I yeah. still would like some more detail in the background. Yeah, not just gray um, swash, just gray, darker gray, and people fighting in front of it. <laughs> but I am liking where the story is going, mm -hmm. which says a lot. Special, 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 Batman Noel. Hey, you know that thing that's been in the back of every comic for the last two weeks? Here it is. You read it. It's Christmassy. I don't understand how you can read those, you know, those pages and not want to read the entire book. Eh. But it, I mean, I always butcher the pronunciations of uh, names. So this is written. Lee Bermejo. Written and art by Lee Bermejo. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a beautiful book to look at. Um, it's a retelling of a, uh, a Christmas Carol with Batman. The Joker and a bunch of the other characters. Who's Scrooge? Is it Batman or is it Joker? It is Batman. To be honest, I wasn't expecting this book in terms of what I read, and I liked it. Um, Superman appears with underpants on the outside, so Buddy jumped um, up and down like a five-year-old like, when that happened. I was like, amazing! It's the Superman I know and love. Um, again, though, the art is just uh, phenomenal in it. Um, yeah, it's a good story. I'd pick it up. It's a good Christmas story. It's uh, November 1st, so that means Christmas is on its way. Stocking stuffers. Um, great book. Batman Noel. Uh, I recommend it. Um, beautiful art and uh, a good story. Up next, Justice League International. Oh, buddy, Batman's in this too. Yeah. And uh, this does something, uh, as I was saying to you, back in the day when they used to have those uh, three-way crossovers between the All-Star Squadron and the JSA and the JLA on those great covers yeah. and Fighting Per Degaton and all that stuff. Yeah. Love those comics. But what I loved about it was you got to see people team up and go out on little two- or three-man missions, and then you got to see interpersonal relationships and what their powers can do, and they learn more about each other. And guess what? You learn more about them. In this issue, everybody pairs off to go fight one of these signal men yeah. or to go find out what's going on, and uh, it works yeah, big I think time. I think it's about time that they did that with yes. this book. And I said to you, wow, the Legion could really do this. Yeah. Because... Uh, for those of you who don't know the different characters, we, as Nug said, they split them up into two, so you get some time with just the two people. Even though it's a team book, I mean, it's still a team book, they split up into smaller teams, and as new readers onto the book, you get a little more fleshing out of those characters. But not only is a great call. But not only for the new readers, but also like for the team itself, because they flew into battle and knew nothing about each other and tanked. Yeah. They're having some success as they learn to work as a team. Yeah, I mean... 
so I mean, if you're enjoying Justice League International, this is great. Um, this is great. If you're not, I don't know if it's gonna, you know, jump the shark here or not, or <laughs> you know, because it, it is more of the same. It's not dark and brooding. You're not getting dark and brooding Batman. No, there's actually Booster had a really great line in it when one of the monsters was uh, one of the aliens was grabbing him in a place that shouldn't be grabbed. Right. Which and, was funny. I mean, it's just it's a good fun team book. So um, still, I I would recommend it. Mm -hmm. Next. Detective Comics. Uh, hey, Batman's in this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, honestly, of the three issues of Detective that we've read so far, with the doll maker and mm -hmm. cutting off people's faces, this is this was a pretty good issue. Yeah. Uh, the story is going someplace. Um, sure, Batman might figure out who the doll maker is, but that doesn't make it easier. It's not like all these villains, any of Batman's villains, are like, "Oh, your name's Joe Smith." Yeah. Crime solved. <laughs> yeah, like it's, exactly. It never works out that way. Yeah, I think what I like about Detective Comics is it's living up to its namesake. Of being the detective comic. It's like right. he's doing detective work and in it, it. I'm actually enjoying the ride. It's like, you know, Detective Comics number one ended with that huge reveal mm -hmm. of the Joker's face being gone. Detective Comics number two ended with the reveal that Jim Gordon, or spoilers, someone that appears to be Jim Gordon, mm -hmm. um... Uh, you know, appears stitched together, um, and I don't know where it's going. And I it, don't either. The reveal for this, yeah, uh, the uh, you know cliffhanger ending of this, kind of made me go, eh. But yeah. I like that the actual thing that's happening isn't for me what's important, and I right. think I think they know that by now. This thing that's happening of this last issue, like the thing, right? Uh, there's something happening behind that, right? Like he's putting on a show. Dollmaker's putting on a show. For somebody, right, and that's the that's the mystery, and yeah. that's what I'm interested in. Kind of think I know where it's going, but I am enjoying the ride. And issue one, I thought, you know, like I said, Batman's voice was very cheesy, um, but it's you know it's gotten better. And I think number three is the strongest book of Detective Comics yet. Mm -hmm, me too. Up next, Men of War, a great com. It's been a great comic for two weeks running. Yeah. Uh, continues. To be a great comic. I, this is the slip of the three, I, I think. I think it lost me. I think it lost me here. Even with no appearance by a superhero, I thought the backup was better than the book. The backup was great. Navy Seals yeah. is a great backup. Yeah, I mean, uh, Men of War is one of the 399 books. It has a backup to it. Um, I thought the backup was actually better than the, was the story itself. Story. I mean... They do introduce spoilers that one of the Marines has superpowers. Some sort of a power. Some sort of a power. We're not sure yet. I just thought it, if that was the entire purpose of that story, it needed more. And I'm a huge Men of War fan. Like, I really did like issues one and two. I just, I thought issue three, it slipped. It me. did slip a little bit, but for me, thankfully, the Navy SEAL story in the back kind right, of... Right, and the backup is good. It's just it's just weird. It's like, okay, I read the first part, I'm like, okay, I didn't like that. And then I read the backup, and I'm like, oh, but I like that. I kind of wish that that was the story. So I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm not sure. It's like, is it 50% good? I, you know, I don't it's know. It's a tough call with this one. I have really enjoyed Men of War the last couple of weeks, to. and this one didn't quite hit the way I hoped it would. Yeah. Uh, it, it also didn't really continue. It seemed right. like we had a two-issue arc. Yeah, I mean, which that was really threw me off. That was surprising. Like we we are picking up somewhere else with other people as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know. I'm on the fence. I, I'm going to read it again, but I'm really on the. I'm fence actually going to go back and read all three. Yeah. And then see what I can gather from that. Maybe this is, maybe this is all part of a bigger thing. We'll see. Oh boy. Swamp Thing. Love Swamp Thing. Have loved every issue of Swamp Thing. And I say that, and then, you know, the corrector in my head goes, you mean both issues? <laughs> yes, yeah. I've loved both issues of Swamp Thing. Uh, this one, no exception, brings back, as you can see from the cover, uh, Abby Arcane, Swamp Thing's girlfriend, quote-unquote, uh, in a way that is fantastic. And in a way that connects... What's going on, not only in Swamp Thing, but in Animal Man as well, connects it all and makes it even better. I'm super excited about Swamp Thing. I mean, you're doing such a good job pitching people on this book. Uh, I, I have nothing more to add except that it's a great book. I did not care at all about Swamp Thing going into this relaunch of titles, and I love Swamp Thing. 
Swamp Thing is such an interesting character. And for, for me, you know, the third tier guy wearing samurai on his <laughs> shirt, uh, Swamp Thing has always been something I enjoyed before it went to Vertigo. I, when I was a kid, right. I loved reading Swamp Thing. Then it went to Vertigo, and I'm like, oh, I, got, I can't read that. It's adults, you know. When I'm a... And then the 90s, I picked up some Swamp Thing. And now that he's back... They're making it all work. There's no part of Swamp Thing's history that's been thrown away. Yeah. It all connects. See, that's amazing. Like, I, as a new reader to Swamp Thing, I'm enjoying the ride. Like, yeah. You know, it's fresh, but I'm like, you're kind of... I can tell that Snyder's uh, piecing together history because it just seems so dense. And, like, there's, like, this tapestry of, of all these events that had happened before. And he's mentioning it, but he's mentioning it not in a way that is confusing to no. new readers. It just makes it so, like... Wow, this world is so There's full. Got, it's and got lush. a history to it, yeah. and he's not. You're not drowning in it. No, you're being introduced to it, and it actually makes somebody like you go, "Oh man, I yeah. want to. I want to read some of that stuff." Yeah, no, one hundred percent. It makes you want to pick up the back issues and see Arcane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Anton Arcane was such a fun character. And if uh, Snyder, Scott Snyder, uh, we've you know talked on Twitter briefly. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching this, if you can bring back the Unmen. <laughs> oh baby, that'll be sweet. Animal Man, uh, Jeff, kicking it with this book, uh, and uh, with Swamp Thing being connected to the green, Animal Man being connected to the red, and both of them now fighting the rot. Yeah, the the other, the other, uh, which is really neat. Um, the black, the black, yeah. Well, yeah, whatever you want to call it, which is amazing. Yeah, uh, the concepts are so huge and it's so great. How crazy is it? Like I said, I only liked the A-listers. Batman, Superman, Wonder I know. Woman. And two of my most anticipated books to read are Swamp Thing and Animal Man. Jeff said in many interviews, as we all know, that this Animal Man is going to be a family comic. It's going to be about the, the family. Well, not family. Like, don't read this to your kids. Oh, not it's at all. It's too creepy. No, it's going to be about <laughs> Animal Man, Buddy's family. Yeah. And there is never, it's never been more apparent that the story isn't just let's follow Buddy around. Let's it's let's yeah. follow the family. You have to know what's happening with the family. I think with Animal Man and Swamp Thing, and again we're talking about them both. Um, Snyder and Lemare, expert storytellers in the pacing yes. and in the certain reveals. They have a great way of as soon as you think you know or you've kind of got a, a solid footing with who the character is and what they're meant to do and their purpose, they kind of. Not, you know, almost like take your knees out. What I like so much in both comics is huge things are introduced, not as the cliffhanger. Huge things happen in the story. Yeah. And it's not just enough to have something happen. You've got to see the consequences or how we're going to deal with this huge thing happening. Right. And yes, we know this huge thing happens in Swamp Thing and this massive thing happens in Animal Man, but they happen like at about the three-quarter mark. Yeah. And then the last quarter of the book, it's not down. Yeah. It's repercussions, and it's dealing with it, yeah. and it's how the hell are they going to get out of this, but it's not, uh-oh, crazy thing at the end of the book, oh no! Yeah. Which you know, dun, be, dun, dun, it's not like that. It's no. like there is this sense of lingering dread yeah. that isn't going to go just, away. You know, it's weird. It's like I never thought I'd enjoy feeling so uneasy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, but that's like Swamp Thing makes you feel like that. Animal Man makes oh, you boy. feel like that. There's a moment here where... Um, spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Uh, Buddy, it's revealed that Buddy was Buddy's whole role was to be the father of the Avatar. So good! Oh, man. That oh. revelation oh. just... Yeah. Knock the breath Thanks, out of me. bud. Yeah. Did your job, buddy. Amazing work. Um, again, it's like if you think the the heroes are on solid footing, the feet are swept out from under them. It's a great book. And it's a Both and it's a great read. Both books, Swamp Thing and Animal Man, such great reads. Yeah. And being connected the way they are, uh, I'm gonna say uh, you you know every author will tell you you don't have to pick up both books to understand what's going on. You certainly don't. But these are two that you should pick up and be reading. It's for your own enjoyment. And for your own it's good. Great books. Excellent. Finally, Action Comics number three. Uh, oh, did we save the Superman comic for last again? Yeah. He's Superman. Yeah. I think you like Superman. Motive. Why is that? Because uh, I bitch about him. Yeah, but people really like reading about you bitching about this. <laughs> Let me start off with this, without even going into any of the story. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the 399 comics, and in the back yeah. of this particular 399 comic is 
just a whole bunch about Superman. Say yes to the ass, buddy. Say yes to the ass. Get your shirt made. I, I say yes to the ass. So let's see. Two pages, three, four pages, then two pages of Superboy, two pages of Supergirl. Not a good bonus. I uh, mean, not a good bonus. Kind of just added filler, to be honest. Yeah, and uh, probably could have used more story. Probably could have used more interest in what was happening. But I will say this. I will say this. I know you don't like it, but I'm coming on. I'm coming on the way you come on to Swamp Thing and Animal Man. Right. I don't read the garbage number one heroes. Right. This book. Garbage number. I'm sorry. <laughs> this this book <laughs> makes me interested for a couple reasons. One, okay. I get to see Brainiac attacking Krypton. I get to see Brainiac attacking now. I get to see Superman dealing with the home life. We've only ever seen him running around in action comics. We've only seen him as Superman. Yeah. This time we see him as Clark. And we see him working for the not Daily Planet. Yeah. We see him working for is the Star or the Daily Star or something? The Star. And it's like the tabloid rag. Yeah. But it's who would hire him. Right. And then he's clearly getting headhunted by the by the planet. Come work for us. Uh, he's trying to be a reporter and even working for the other paper is getting scooped by Lois. So... Yeah. They're setting this all up. Morrison's doing a great job of setting this all up. And if you don't care about the Superman and Superman comics, right. this is the book to read because you're actually learning yeah. about the guy who we don't know anymore. Right. And that I agree with you 100%. If you've watched our reviews, you know how I feel about Superman. You also know that I have recommended Action Comics yes, number you one have. and number two. Yes, you have. I don't think Action Comics number three is that strong. Just as a, a book on its own. I think I'm, there's a lot of information being thrown out, a lot of concepts being thrown out. I don't, while the other ones had a certain cohesion to them, I didn't find the cohesion in this book. Having said that, I like Grant Morrison. You know that. I'm a huge Grant Morrison mark. He means whatever, you know, that means that generally speaking, whatever he puts out, I will read and enjoy. Um, like I said, I think issue number three is not necessarily a strong issue and overall with the concept of superman if you read grant morrison's super gods book which i do recommend look i'm just shilling for morrison here <laughs> um, oh and i said read animal man that's right and i'm saying invisibles are doom patrol that's i'm right. still bringing so up it's morrison. not like we're you know we're overly negative on this superman i'm saying that he, grant morrison writes a lot of good stuff and he knows his superheroes um and he talks about concepts he draws attention to the atomic bomb is really just a concept because we don't actually experience the co the atomic bomb. Right. In that same way, Superman is a concept because we don't actually experience Superman. It's the same way we, we read about it. And when he was growing up, the fear of the uh, atomic bomb was overpowered by the concept of Superman. And I find that reading the action comics and the Superman, this new Superman as a concept is lacking. If you catch my meaning. I know there's a lot of conceptually garbage you know coming out of my mouth right now but that's kind of where I'm I'm trying to find something that latches on to the universal appeal that was Superman in the past well, and I'm not seeing it yet. Well the universal appeal of Superman in the past was that he was very socially driven. He was a socially conscious like his, the, the writers and the stories were socially right. conscious so Grant is going back to that by making him fight for the little guy and in our day, and in this comic, in this comic's day, uh, the little guy is getting crapped on by big business. Yeah, and I, but I think that the one change that they made with Superman is, and I'm, this is where I'm curious to see where it goes, removing his parents. There's a good moment where he says, I'm sorry I disappointed you. Yeah. But I'm, I hesitate, like I, I, I want to question, why would he think he disappointed him? Like what are the teaches that, teachings that his parents gave him? We know what old Superman's teachings were. Yeah. But how, you know, how really were his parents taken away? I think that was a, just one moment because he really did try to save a cat from a tree and the kid freaked out. Really? You think so? And then he was like, oh, man, I failed. And he felt like a failure because he know, couldn't guys, save a cat I from a tree. I apologize. Maybe I'm reading way too much into that one panel. This guy um, is reading too much into this so, one panel. So uh, my underpants Superman appeared in Batman Noel, so that's my recommendation <laughs> for the week. <laughs> Yay, underpants. <laughs> Thumbs up. Uh, now, it's time for Red Tornado Watch. Yeah, there is, is red no tornado. Red Tornado in... That was a special Red Tornado. You got some, uh... Real people. Real people. I got real people to do it. Impressive. Uh, yeah. You know what? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so uh, now we're going to do our books of the week, and every week we each pick six. Um, and usually we agree because, like I said before, we agree on good books. I have a feeling that we are not going to agree today. Really? I don't know. Something about me. <sighs> what the hell? I think that's my... That might be five. Ah, oh, forget it. Okay, <laughs> you take those just in case. Okay. Uh, my uh, six this week... Uh, and I, uh, I make full knowledge that I have a bias. So, uh, my six this week are action comics I recommend, uh, detective, look at me going with big names, detective wow. comics, and now, Stormwatch, go get it, go get the others, uh, Animal Man, go get it, go get the others, Swamp Thing, go get it, go get the others, and OMAC, if you're not picking this comic up, I'm saying it right now, you're dumb. Andrew. I won't say you're dumb. But, I will. You're but, dumb. But you should pick up the comic because it's good. Feel good. And you know what, Nug? I agree with you. What? I thought for sure there'd be one. Maybe Red Lanterns might be number seven. Yeah, I mean, Red Lanterns is right up there. The only thing is, is even though Detective's getting better and Action Comics is still, you know, acceptable, you know, it's it's quality work. I'm just not crazy about this, this week's issue. Um, these are definite pickups. Uh, OMAC... Swamp oh. Thing, Animal Man, and Stormwatch for me. Those are those are my for sure pickups. For sure. And my uh, book of the week this week is Swamp Thing, number three. Uh, in your book of the week, I while I want to say Animal Man just so we can tie in together, I have to say Stormwatch because I it blew my mind this week. I really enjoyed it. And so Stormwatch is new to the top books. Um, I'm going with Swamp Thing. But Animal Man, for like, if I can pick Animal Man and Stormwatch, I will. Like, my three big ones this week are Animal Man, Swamp Thing, and Stormwatch. And if you don't pick up OMAC, and oh. you don't pick up uh, Detective, and you don't pick up Action, but you still want to spend money, Batman Noel is a good, uh, you know, it's, it's a good a stocking stuffer. If you've got yeah. a Batman fan under the tree, that you can put a Batman fan in your life, you could put uh, Noel under the tree as a stocking stuffer. Of course, we can't now, because he bought it today. Yeah, bought it. I'm, I'm a sucker for that. Oh, so anyway, uh... That's it. That's the show. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to the Silver Snail for having us every week. Thanks for your comments on the videos. Uh, you can watch this on iTunes. iTunes. And YouTube. And YouTube uh, the Snail's website. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, we're having a good time doing this mostly. Uh, mostly. But when the, uh, especially when the comics are well stapled. That always makes for a good comic. <laughs>